My question is to the Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills and Employment. What progress has the government made in... Would the member please start his question? Thank you, Mr Speaker. What progress has the government made in ensuring overseas-based student loan borrowers meet their obligations to New Zealand taxpayers? Mr. Honourable Speaker, Stephen Joyce. Uh, we are making very good progress in what is a big project. There are around 110,000 student loan borrowers overseas, and repayment of their loans by them has historically been very low. The previous government put it in the too hard basket. In 2010, we launched a comprehensive program of work to improve repayment rates, and borrowers do need to know that when they go overseas, their loan doesn't disappear, their obligation to repay it continues. Today, I was able to announce with the Minister of Revenue that Inland Revenue has now received over $100 million extra from overseas borrowers as a result of this initiative. As I say, it's a good start on tackling a large problem. For every dollar the government has invested in this initiative, taxpayers have received about $11 in additional repayments. So it's been a very worthwhile investment. Supplementary question to McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what tools has the Inland Revenue Department been using to increase repayments from borrowers who are based overseas? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, well, it is a multi-agency initiative, and the first thing we did was make it easier for overseas borrowers to actually repay their loans. IRD set up toll-free phone numbers for borrowers in Australia and the UK, and they can choose from four online money transfer companies offering fee-free services, and they waive the convenience fee for credit or debit cards as well. The IRD has also been advertising on social media, directly contacting borrowers, working with private debt collection companies to assist in tracking and collecting from borrowers in default, and taking legal action against those who continue to ignore their obligations. It's important they do meet their obligations to the people who have supported their tertiary study wherever they are in the world. Supplementary question to McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How has the IRD been working with other government agencies to increase repayment rates? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, has recently had an information signing, sharing agreement signed between the IRD and the Department of Internal Affairs so that passport applications to the DIA are matched with the IRD's database of overseas-based loan defaulters. Since October last year, as it, uh, early this year, over 500 contacts have been made and repayment arrangements totalling $1.2 million had been set up from that initiative alone. 13 borrowers actually immediately paid their loans in full. IRD is also notified by Customs now when overseas-based borrowers in serious default return to the country. Over $2 million has been received as a result of contacts through that approach. Finally, IRD now has the ability to seek an arrest warrant to deal with the most serious cases when all other efforts to persuade the borrower to make repayments have failed. They have received over 3,000 calls from overseas borrowers since this power was introduced through the Student Loan Scheme Amendment Act 2014. Question number nine. Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Housing. 